Hello, this is Basement Tapes, episode number 240. That's how far we've come. Pretty spectacular. And I appreciate anybody who has tuned in once, whether it's for five seconds or through the full 20 second when the levy breaks intro. I appreciate it. Uh, we are on a fact finding mission about my collection and perhaps a tiny, tiny uh glint of inspiration for your collection and as i always say enjoy uh collecting and more importantly enjoy your own collection and this is me trying to enjoy my collection in 1972 and we have what i've called an agitator uh as was fleer but this is tcma and this is the first set of tcma cards that i have in my collection it's the 1972 tcma's the 30s uh collection tcma uh, is it Tom Collier and Mike Aronstein? Uh, they uh, put their names and initials together, and this is what we got. And I think uh, one of the great things about this is that this is the first card set I'm aware of, or the first company I'm aware of that uh, was collectors producing cards. Uh, otherwise, we had a lot of bubblegum people producing cards, we had gas stations producing cards. Serial companies, all that stuff. But those people were collecting money. These folks uh, decided to change or to uh, parlay their passion for cards into card sets that would uh, be produced epically. I don't know how many sets, but there are hundreds of sets of TS TCMA stuff out there. And uh, I think the legend has it that this probably grew out of uh, buying a massive stash of photographs from back in the day, some black and white stuff and um, the rights to those photographs and uh, the ability to pr produce them. And using those photographs, they produced these cards. So that was as disjointed as an intro as you get. But the 1972 CCMA's the 30s collection here. There's 24 of them that I own. Let's get to Beckett. Beckett says there's 120 average value of one dollar two cent and one hundred and twenty two dollars total. No rookie cards, uh, but a set of these will cost you between fifty and one hundred dollars. They say this one hundred and twenty card set features borderless black and white photos of players who played during the nineteen thirties and measures approximately two inches by two and seven eighths inches. The backs carry the player's name, team, and years during the nineteen thirties in which he played. Cards numbered one through seventy-two are unnumbered and are checklisted below alphabetically. Cards numbered seventy-three through one twenty are listed according to their number on their backs let's see if anybody here is more valuable than uh anyone else that has to be the case here right so let's take a look here beckett tells us that joe dimaggio card number 20 is the big one in here followed by james fox card 120 and dizzy dean card number 18 let's go over to tcdb to talk about tcma 509 cards, they're telling us, the 1972 TCMA, the 1930s is. That's a lot. Uh, it says, notes, released in sets of 24, the majority of the cards are black and white and two inches by two and three quarters inches. Cards 337 through 384, sets 15 and 16, measure two and a half by three and a half. Cards 409 through 456, sets 18 and 19, were printed in blue ink. The first 72 cards, sets one through three, were not numbered. So I'm confused as all get out at this point. Teams represented Boston Braves, Boston Red Sox, Brooklyn Dodgers, Chicago Cubs, Chicago White Sox, Cincinnati Reds, Cleveland Indians, Detroit Tigers, New York Giants, New York Yankees, Philadelphia Athletics, Philadelphia Phillies, Pittsburgh Pirates, St. Louis Browns, St. Louis Cardinals, and the original Washington Senators. Hall of Famers in here. 59 of them. You got them all. You got Earl Combs, Cronin, Dean, Dickey, DiMaggio, Frisch, Garinger, Gomez, the great Robert Moses Grove, uh, Chick Hafey, uh, uh, Jesse Haynes, Bucky Harris, Hubble, two Hubbles, uh, Lazari, Medwick, Ruffing, two times two, uh, Bill Terry, Gomez, Lopez, Burley Grimes. You have a double card with uh, Charles O'Leary and Rogers Hornsby, obviously. Luke Appling, Heine Manouche. Uh, James Fox, Joe McCarthy, Joe Sewell. Uh, there is a double card with Hal Schumacher and Lefty Gomez, Jim Bottomley, Al Simmons times two, Ted Lyons, DeRocher times two, Joe Cronin, Earl Everill, uh, Bob Feller, Mickey Cochran, Mel Ott, two Casey Stengels, Lefty O'Doul, Tony Lazari, Hal Newhauser, Hornsby Alone, Travis Jackson, Wade Hoyt, Rick Farrell, uh, Hank Greenberg, Gabby Hartnett, Freddie Lindstrom, Bobby Doer, 
or doer. Uh, Rabbit Marinville, Johnny Evers, and Hank Gowdy on card 399. You have Gehrig, George Kelly, Chuck Klein, Rabbit Moranville, and a checklist featuring, uh, it looks like Lazari to me. Yeah, that's Tony Lazari. So uh, that's the Hall of Famers just from the 30s. Inserts and related sets. There is a no-numbered checklist that we saw of Tony Lazari. Lazari uh, Gallery. Let's look at these cards again. Full bleed, borderless, almost look like a combination of smaller exhibit cards with the old Zenut cards. And again, alpha baget, alpha alphabetical order. Uh, no numbered, all that fun stuff in the start here. Bo Bell from the St. Louis Browns is card number one. Max Bishop. Uh, his nickname is Tilly, uh, Max Frederick Tilly Bishop. He was 1924 through 33, Philadelphia AL, copyright TCMA, Amawalk, New York. Uh, let's see what else we say here. This card, uh, memorabilia associates, 19 something something. So, uh, it's hard for me to read on here, but I do know that, uh, there is a typo on the back of Matt, Max Bishop's card. I'm sure quality control was at the least of uh, the folks at TCMA's minds when they were trying to get this out the door. So much to think about when you uh, are printing cards, but there are several uh, throughs, T-H-R-U's, uh, spelled T-H-U-R on the back of cards. So they tried. I think they did well. Uh, any kind of card collecting set is fun. The front of the cards, again, full bleed. Black and white photo, a simple copyright 1972 TCMA on the front of those. So it's a good way to get to know the older players. And we would get some of these sets later on with uh, the Conlon series from the Sporting News, TSN, as they say. But uh, this was a little bit before that, about 20 years, if you uh, ask me. And uh, getting to see those old players in their old ballparks, uh, the poses, all that stuff. So you can kind of uh, wrap your head into that era. Uh, it was a banging era when it comes to baseball. Uh, lots of people hitting, uh, all sorts of records being established or uh, broken, and then uh, it would all come to an end there in the beginning of the 40s, both with cards and baseball uh, to some extent with the war. So a uh, wonderfully prosperous time for baseball, and these pictures reflect that. Uh, there's some nice post photos here too, so it's something you don't normally get, but with a treasure trove of photos that, that Mike Arenstein was able to uh, obtain. Uh, they certainly did pick the best of the best here. Joseph Strip, card number 106, is a prime example. That's a landscape card. Joseph Becker with the Indians. Series of landscape cards in there, too, which I love. I love how they mix it up. So that's your 1972 TCMA, 1930s. Uh, various reports of how many cards are in there. Between 509, according to uh, our friends there at uh, TCDB, or if you ask the folks at Beckett, let's see what they said again. Beckett told us 120. So anywhere between 120 and 509 cards there. Uh, Hall of Famers abound, and uh, all, everything's included there, folks. You have your double, your multiplayer cards, your landscape, your pose, your action, all that stuff. So... Uh, again, 1972 TCMA, the 1930s. It's not the last time we'd hear from TCMA, that's for sure. So that's the Basement Tapes, number 240.